Today we're tackling a profound flat earth conundrum. If the earth is a globe, why don't planes just fly off into space? <laughs> Shut up and sit down, you big bald f***. Please subscribe. Horizontal that they're referring to is 90 degrees to down, mm -hmm. and that direction of down changes around the Earth. The direction of down, which is just gravity doing its thing, does change as you move around a sphere, because down is not some fixed point in space, which is why Wolfie, an actual airline pilot, explained it the way he did. You heard that? Changes around the Earth. Well done, flat side. Can you balance a ball on your nose while you clap like a demented seal? Idiot. But on the globe, down is towards the centre of the globe. No, so really? my finger nope. is showing... Hang on a second, what's going on here? We had a nope from one of them and a no really, as if to imply, yeah, we know, from flat side. See, this is the problem with flat earthers. They can't even agree with each other. I think the direction of down at various points. And guess what? Every direction, or zenith, or nadir, is different. So eh, guess what? If you have a horizontal set at the top of your globe there, let's say in Asia, and then you have a new horizontal set at the equator, let's say Africa, it's a different horizontal. Okay, so they're bringing out the finger pointing, showing down at various points on a globe and then dropping the bombshell that if you set a horizontal in Asia and another at the equator in Africa, it's different. Yeah, and... That's what it's meant to be like. Are you genuinely suggesting the pilots are just eyeballing it? Like, hmm, that horizontal over Europe felt good. Let's just stick with that for the rest of the trip. Who cares if we end up upside down over Argentina? No, that's not how it works, you absolute walnuts. Yeah, calm creaky lasted, didn't he? <laughs> so a different up and down. So in other words, if you have pitch data, it will show. Yeah, you can't have up and down on a globe. Car on road. <laughs> Don't worry, it's fine. I can make fun of accents because I haven't got one. <laughs> well, the plot thickens or flattens in the case of these clowns. So because there's a different up and down, which again is the definition of a spear. No, not a spear. A sphere. Which again is the definition of a sphere, you brilliant detectives. Your conclusion is that pitch data should be constantly freaking out, showing up and down movement like a demented yo-yo. But here's the rather inconvenient truth for these amateur flight engineers. Aircraft maintain a constant altitude relative to the local horizontal, thanks to incredibly sophisticated gyroscopic instruments and autopilot systems. They're not battling some imaginary roller coaster. Uh, don't feel so good. <laughs> Ew! <laughs> They're smoothly adjusting to the subtle curve, which is why your flight feels level and why pitch data isn't a gotcha for flat earthers. It's irrefutable proof that when we fly, we're flying around the globe. Do they have a, a like a sideways or upside down um, Caribbean cruise line on that globe or are they ever going to show that? <laughs> and can you show us a cruise liner where the ship and its passengers are falling off the edge of your magical space pizza? No, you can't. Because that would actually require you to explain how gravity or whatever bizarre upward acceleration you've invented this week would work. <laughs> you know what's also funny, guys? I always claim there's no up and down on the globe. But why, do you, why is there a thing called the North Pole? and the South Pole. There's no up or down on a globe and yet we still have a North and a South Pole. Those poles are just the points on a globe where the rotational axis would punch through the surface. Think of it like an imaginary skewer that the Earth is rotating on. Call them North and South for navigational convenience on a sphere. Not because there's some cosmic arrow pointing up from Canada, it's an agreed upon system for a round planet. Not a contradiction. You really are flat Earth's finest, aren't you? Well, well that, that's where it, it started off with, like, flat Earthers think that North's at the top and South's at the bottom. Well, it on is. that axis, that is correct. That it, is, it has got a top and a bottom, but you don't have an up and a down on a globe. You have, like, inter-centre Earth. And right. You have an idea and a zenith.
Look, I've got no issue with somebody being wrong because they don't understand how something works. That's when you need to look into it and read the information that's out there about whatever it is you don't understand. Now, this is a perfect sphere. Can you point to the top or the bottom of this sphere for me? No, you can't. Because a sphere does not have a top or a bottom. Yeah, and are those parallel with each other, Flats? Oh, and... They gotta be level too, right? Mm -hmm. They don't have any parallel zeniths. Well, the intellectual firepower of these questions is truly awe-inspiring in its misunderstanding of basic geometry. So you're baffled why your zeniths aren't parallel and why everything isn't level across a globe? Welcome to spherical geometry, where your overhead is unique to your spot on the ball and level is a local concept determined by gravity, not some universal flat plane. But it does magnificently showcase your ongoing struggle with anything beyond a sheet of paper. Understanding this and not understanding that if you have a direction of down, you have 90 degrees to that, mm. that's horizontal. So that's how yeah. aircraft instruments define horizontal by knowing the, yes. the direction of down and going 90 degrees to that. That's horizontal. Yeah, and that's why when you fly level, you keep going where that reference to horizontal is. No yeah. curve. Well done, Wolfie. Oh, the irony. It's too much. So an actual pilot explains that aircraft instruments define horizontal by always being 90 degrees to the local down, which, yeah, changes around the globe. And that's precisely how planes fly level on a sphere. Then in a moment of pure, unintended irony, Flatsoy chimes in with a triumphant yeah. And that's why when you fly level, you keep going where that reference to horizontal is. Essentially, he's perfectly articulated a fundamental principle of spherical flight, completely undermining his own flat earth arguments in a glorious self-debunk, which he caught on video for all of us to laugh at. You can't be parallel to a curve. That's stupid. Oh, you can all, be concentric. All horizontals are parallel, and all horizontals are parallel to the plane of the horizon. Ah, the profound wisdom of a flat earther strikes again. That's stupid. You can't be parallel to a globe. And just like that, they've managed to redefine geometry and also spectacularly miss the point. It's like arguing you can't be parallel to a banana because it's curved. No, you absolute genius. Yes, but you can be equidistant from its surface, can't you? When we talk about flying parallel to the Earth's surface, we're not saying there's some magical straight line stretching infinitely through space that never touches the globe. We're talking about maintaining a constant altitude above that curving surface. Why am I even bothering? Because it's clear to me now that this shower of shit are too stupid to even grasp the fact that that's exactly what they are. Stupid! I'm gonna, I'm gonna put a line. Okay, and we're gonna put a point on every point in this line. A degree for each one, just, right? Yeah. yeah, we're just gonna say this is just every every point. Okay, obviously it's not perfect. It's just to make an illustration, and we say it's one nautical mile in between. Okay, so that's two, that's three, that's four, that's five, six, seven, and so on. Okay, so nautical mile, nautical mile, nautical. You guys get that? Yeah. Okay. So change, change color sweats just to make it interesting. <laughs> <laughs> Great. So we would agree that the pitch data reading that is just going to give us. So flat side with all the artistic prowess of a toddler and using Windows Paint draws a flat line with dots representing nautical miles, then triumphantly declares that the pitch data would be flat over his flat line. And he's right. If the Earth were a two-dimensional doodle on your screen, that would be true. But here's the inconvenient bit for you, Flatside. Earth is a giant sphere, not a digital artboard. Your entire proof hinges on modelling the planet incorrectly, then being completely bewildered when real-world aviation data doesn't match your fundamentally flawed crayon drawing. Although at least he's drawing with them and not eating them, I suppose. <laughs> At every point where it pings, it just gives the same yeah. horizontal, correct? Yeah. And where's the real-world data to support that? 
Okay, okay, okay. So, we have this now. Now we have a horizontal. Oh, wait. New horizontal. Mm. Oh, wait. A new horizontal. Yeah. Oh, wait. A new horizontal. Hey, it's pinwheel earth. Oh, look, flat side's gone all out with geometry. So he's drawn a curve which shockingly looks suspiciously like a cross section of a globe, and then he's adding tangent lines from every point, exclaiming, Oh, wait, a new horizontal. Yes, you've drawn a diagram of how a sphere works, you absolute genius. Every point you've made in this video debunks yourself, you tool. Uh, in other words, you haven't got a clue what you're talking about. Yeah, we can tell. What will the data show on the graph? Changing horizontal constantly, correct? Of course. So what's the graph going to show? It would drop, 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 drop. Each horizontal yep. will be lower than the other. Yeah. Right, exactly. Right, hold on. Are they saying that pitch data graphs should show planes constantly going drop, drop, drop? No. It's not going to show drop, 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 you utter muppets. Pitch graphs actually show stable flight because it's flying level to a sphere. The only thing consistently dropping is your understanding of physics and the IQs of anyone who is stupid enough to believe a single word out of your mouths. It's a, you, you, you can be concentric to a curve, you can't be parallel to a curve. Oh, so they've stumbled onto a big word, concentric, and correctly identified that you can be concentric to a curve. But then immediately face-planted by saying you can't be parallel to a curve, as if geometry suddenly stops working in three dimension. When we talk about being parallel to a globe, we simply mean... I've already said all this, haven't I? Let's move on. I feel like they think they don't think uh, multi-dimensionally though. They just think literally the North Pole up, the South Pole down, and that's where they're fixated on. And they can't, you know, open their pineal gland, open you know enough to actually think within their own mind of how stupid this is. You've absolutely nailed it, whoever you are but not in the way you might think, because that's precisely the core of your entire flat earth argument right there. You're stuck in a profoundly two-dimensional mindset, desperately trying to force a spherical reality into a flat mental box. This North Pole is up fixation isn't just a quaint misunderstanding, it's the bedrock of your inability to grasp, well, anything that requires thinking beyond a sheet of paper simple as that it's just the same as you standing you you know when if you're let's put it this way if you stand you're not going to get a headache now turn your body upside down hang upside down all that blood's going to rush to your head correct so you're going to know what's up and down you're going to feel it it's the same with the gyro it knows up from down because relative density baby Gyros know up from down just like your head feels a blood rush when you hang upside down. All thanks to relative density, baby. Holy shit, you're a moron. Gyros are sophisticated mechanical instruments operating on angular momentum and inertial reference, not feeling up like a human with internal plumbing. And your attempt to equate complex avionics with the dizzying blood rush powered by some vague relative density is just another desperate and hilariously flawed dodge to avoid acknowledging the actual physics of the planet we live on. Thank you all so much for watching, and I will see you again on Friday. Love you. Bye. What you just said is one of the most insanely idiotic things I have ever heard. At no point in your rambling, incoherent response were you even close to anything that could be considered a rational thought. Well, I'm glad that's over because I picked up my new prescription from the pharmacy this morning. My doctor's prescribed me anti-gloating cream. I can't wait to rub it in. <laughs> I don't think so. No, 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 no. I don't think so. No, 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 no. It's never, ever, 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 ever.